turning table. And welcome back to Conrad's Corner News Talk and Inspiration, where we share the stories impacting college students across the nation. My name is Conrad Wilton. Thanks for joining us, everybody. It's a fine Wednesday morning. Appreciate you waking up with us. Our time is 8.20. You're listening to KDVS 90.3 FM in Davis. That's KDVS Davis. Outstanding radio station here. Outstanding radio show. An outstanding day. Wednesday, hump day. That's right, folks. <laughs> uh, right in the middle of the week, you are halfway to Friday and, of course, Saturday and Sunday with some great football action and lots of great things to look forward to. Hopefully the weather warms up a little bit. But what is your definition of a good person? That's the next story here on Conrad's Corner. What traits come to mind when you think of a good person? Well, it seems rather simple, right? When I think of a good person or at least when most people think of a good person, they think of someone who is kind, someone who is compassionate, emotionally admirable, someone who's loyal, someone who is heartfelt, they're genuine, a polite person, someone who's just pleasant to be around. Other people think of those traits and add intelligence, perhaps creativity, finding creative problems to dilemmas that we may have, someone who's helpful, someone who's utilitarian. And then there are some folks who sort of see a good person as someone who is strong, someone who has good looks, physical physique, stuff like that. These are good for certain things. Uh, but And then, of course, a lot of people also go with the strong appeal, sort of the, uh, the strong inner aspects of a good person, like bravery and courage, gall, guts to stand up while everybody else is sitting down, stuff like that. That courage for example, is the hardest trait, at least in my view, to find in a in, in, in anybody these days. True courage to stand up for what you believe in and in, in the defense of yourself and in the defense of others. Courage, obviously, is very important, but it is rare. It is rare to come across. Anybody can come across someone who's polite, someone who's kind and heartfelt, who is you know a genuine good person, and they're upset when you would think a good person would be upset. Something sad happened. They're upset. They get angry when someone else would get angry. They're happy for you because something's going well. But the courage, the guts, that is truly difficult to find these days. Not that it doesn't exist. Obviously, it does. But it just seems that that sort of almost as if it's the missing element because it's difficult to have courage to stand up to you know for, for what you believe in or whatever else it may be because you you know you have the spotlight on yourself or you know it's, it's very difficult to stand up for somebody else who might be getting bullied or whatever it else you know maybe because you're putting yourself in a situation that you theoretically did not have to partake in you're doing so voluntarily you have to overcome your instincts to stay away, it's not my deal, and you intervene. Well, where I'm getting with this is an incredible story of a 15-year-old teenager by the name of Eight Zaz Hassan in Pakistan, who unfortunately is no longer with us. And the reason why is because he tackled a suicide bomber about to enter Hassan's school. And... Unfortunately, uh, you know, Hassan did not survive the, uh, you know, the explosion, but he did prevent the suicide bomber from entering the school. That's the whole point of the story. The suicide bomber, I guess, was, ended up, uh, I mean, there was about 2,000 students at the school at the time of the incident. And when Hassan and his friends spotted a man wearing a, a suicide vest, like a, a bomb vest or whatever like that, wearing explosives strapped to himself, he was walking towards the school, I suppose, and the man approached Hassan asking for directions, but Hassan started to get a bit suspicious. And then the bomber tried to run away and escape, but Hassan knew something was up and decided to tackle the guy. And in the ensuing struggle, the bomber either accidentally or on purpose denotated the explosives, killing himself and Hassan, but not injuring anybody else. There's no telling what would have happened if Hassan said, well, I don't need to get involved in this. I'll just, you know, give the guy the directions to wherever he wants to go. 
whatever you know aspect of the school he wants to blow up or whatever I, you know i'd say well i must be mistaken i don't think he's wearing anything or it's not my problem how could this happen but apparently in pakistan in the middle east uh, you know these these incidents are unfortunately commonplace i mean not that they happen all the time but in many senses they do people are on the lookout and for a 15 year old teenager to tackle this suicide bomber because you know because he had the intuition that this guy is going to blow up the school he's going to hurt people and during the struggle hassan told his friends and this is of course according to the bbc although a lot of different news sites online uh, have wrote a story about this many of them with slightly different facts but the gist of the story is true and i'm getting my facts from bbc so they tend to be reliable but you know you never know uh, but anyway hassan told his friends during the struggle quote i'm going to stop him he is going to school to kill my friends that's what he said so obviously hassan had the intent and the foresight that this guy is a bad guy Someone's got to do something. And in Pakistan, I guess when you call the police, the response time is, is, is negligible, meaning it's, it's not enough to, to actually stop this guy. He can just simply run into the halls and blow it up. Even here in the U.S., for example, if, uh, it only takes a matter of seconds for all hell to break loose. Hassan wasn't going to let it happen. And there's talk about him receiving the highest military award in Pakistan for sacrificing his life to save his peers. It's truly unbelievable. Hassan's father said, said it best. He said, quote, my son made his mother cry, but saved hundreds of mothers from crying for their children. Eitzaz Hassan truly is a hero. He really is. There's, there's no way around it. And for a 15-year-old, 15-year-old, I mean, you know, where were you at 15? Would you be tackling suicide bombers and, and saving the day in this situation, making the ultimate sacrifice? I don't know. That's a tough thing. That's a tough deal. But Hassan did it, and there's no telling what kind of terror would have been unleashed if this guy, you know, got the directions he was looking for, would have been able to walk through the hallways of the school or walk into a classroom and, and, and blow everybody up. It is despicable that we have these kinds of people or animals, I suppose, walking the earth who would even conceive of doing something like this, but unfortunately, that's the world that we live in. You know, terrorism, you think, is a problem in the United States. It is definitely a problem in the U.S. There's no way around that. But it is, unfortunately, nothing compared to what's going on in the Middle East, Africa, Russia. You know, the holiday bombings that happened, you know, a few weeks ago. Up, uh, you know, leading up to the Olympics in Saatchi. Hopefully things are going to be safe over there. But, you know, they had... A lot of people that died and dozens of folks were injured. I believe that was at a train station. I have to check up on that. But, you know, Russia, who, which is, you know, still kind of Europe. Of course, London had their issues as well in the past. Asia as well. I mean, South America, drug cartels in Mexico. I mean, genocide, terror. I mean, it's everywhere, unfortunately. And to read about a 15-year-old kid standing up against it, I find that inspiring. Hopefully you find it inspiring as well.